Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today, watcher of realms, the very first top 10 list, the first of many here on the channel for watcher of realms. First off, how you guys doing? Send us some positive vibes, some love your way, especially if you need it out there today. I'm doing fantastic. I'm a little bummed out. I couldn't volunteer to coach my son's soccer this year because of travel for work. It's every weekend and I'm going to be traveling like, I don't know, a third, I guess, and there's no assistant coaches. So I'm really bummed out. I was really looking forward to doing that this year, but but otherwise, I'm doing fantastic. Hope you guys are as well. So today, there's there's a lot of heroes in this game, right? And if you're anything like me, the first thing that you do when you you know you summon anybody is you go pull up a tier list and you see how good your uh, hero is, especially if you're a beginner in the game. So for today's video, I have my own experience. Now I have quite a few of the champions on today's list, the top ten epic heroes inside the game. Uh, but furthermore, I consulted every tier list that I could find online I kind of aggregated that and I mixed in my own opinion and voila here we are the top 10 epics are yeah top 10 epic heroes in the game so let's go ahead and jump into the gallery and start with in no particular order but maybe in a little bit of a particular order here because I am so excited I actually put out a video just sharing that I pulled this epic uh, from the infernal blast it's none other than Dolores widely considered to be the best epic hero inside the game uh, primarily because of the she has some heals which is great but one of the best buffs in the game the best buff in the game inspiration uh, a great great ability in a very cost effective hero as well five cost man sign me up so the abilities aoe heal over time uh, attack base you want to build her with a lot of attack uh and again the inspiration 30 percent to all allies in range for 14 seconds she has a really cool range uh as well and then the passive merciful beauty 60 seconds after being deployed permanently increases base attacks healing multipliers by five percent graceful dance will have a 50 percent chance to increase the hero's re uh, rage by a hundred when it ends one of the most essential endgame epic heroes inside the game, if not the most essential, okay? These are in no particular order, by the way, because it's it's weird to kind of try to rank uh, champions 10 to 1, uh, considering they all have quite different roles inside the game. Uh, but if we go over to the North Throne, we'll go over an epic champion who I just got my hands on, guys, and it is Olog. So he is a defender, as you guys can see. His cost is 18. Revival time, obviously 60 here. Uh, uh, shielding from this dude's passive, right? Every 12 seconds, cast a shield that can absorb damage equal to 50% of the max HP. What? Basically, always active shield. That's what makes him, again, one of the best uh, uh, tanks out there inside the game. Defenders, a uh, 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 campaign, Void Rift, Tide is where this dude excels. Uh, his cost is 18. So number three is going to be Wrath, guys. Wrath is a fighter. He can take a few hits, too, especially in the early game and the mid game. Uh, he's not super squishy until, like, the end game. Uh, but this dude just deals an insane amount of damage. And the good news is he's a 14-day login hero and he's just a beast he's a super super hard carry great uh damage uh great fighter in the game campaign void rift guild boss tied uh always great there and then at five awakening he can self-sustain as well he's a lord and one of the best factions inside the game uh to boot uh deals 100 percent damage to one enemy uh auto cast when activated increase a damage dealt by 30 percent for 30 seconds this is ultimate by the way during which time deals 90 percent damage up to five enemies for every three attacks so nice aoe there and then soul basher the next attack deals 60 percent additional damage after every four attacks and then the lord skill increases faction allies basic attributes by 10 percent and it scales up from there so wrath is a monster i can speak from experience i'm sure a lot of you guys will agree with me in the comments next up is Demos another fighter on our list guys this dude is cool little Brackus the shifter bobs going on over here so again a, a fighter this guy's damage scales according to his max HP so he's a beast in campaign uh guild boss as well uh just absolute s tier in in guild boss good in the tide as well he deals 75 percent damage to one enemy two times on the a1 uh his ultimate increased max HP by a hundred percent and attack and defense by 20 percent 
20%. Each basic attack lands four consecutive strikes, and the effect lasts for 20 seconds. On the passive, tearing. Each consecutive attack against the same target increases crit damage by 10% for 10 seconds, stacking up to six times. The duration of the effect will not be refreshed after re uh, reaching the maximum number of stacks. Stacks will reset upon switching targets. So really, that tearing uh, over time, uh, really a beast in terms of damage dealer again scaling off of his hp his cost is 18 next up is hollow so hollow is a magic hero from the cursed cult hollow is a rage regen or rage booster i should say uh can really fit in any team kind of an all-around champion right campaign we're talking void rift guild boss tides gear raids you name it uh you can see the range here the cost is 17 on the single target heal grants attack base healing to one ally in range the light of bliss which is the ultimate when triggered increases the hero's uh healing multiplier by 25% for 20 seconds the hero can heal one more target and then energetic bliss which is what we love about this champion and what makes her again so uh, versatile in terms of her use case when light of bliss is activated recovers 0.6% uh, rage for allies in the range every one second very good again all around hero who uh, I, I really feel like all of the heroes on today's list are worth investing in I guess obviously they're all top 10 heroes in the epic category next Next, now I just got my hands on Vortex, but Vortex, another healer, a great healer. The only downside, and I'm being very nitpicky here, is that Hall of Vortex doesn't bring a, a ton extra in terms of essential buffs or anything to the table. But if you're looking for heals, especially a heal carry in, again, the early in the mid game, look no further. The heal scale based off a of max HP as well. And uh, campaign, Void Rift, Tide, Ray. Aids, uh, you name it again. Uh, the cost is 17. Single target heal, HP base healing to one ally in range. We have increased on the uh, ultimate manual, increase the healing multiplier by 25% for 20 seconds when triggered, restores HP equal to 10% max HP for all allies in range. If the heal amount exceeds their max HP, 110% of the excess will be converted into damage absorbing water shield that lasts for 10 seconds. What a great ultimate in terms of healing and support. Healing ripple the passive when the hero's basic attack heals in excess of the target's HP. The surplus damage is converted into damage absorbing water shield. Again, 70% of the healing, which lasts for 10 seconds. During the effect of moisture, the hero can heal one more target. Uh, really, really boss healer. Just one of the better ones in the game. Can really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with most, if not all, of the legendary healers out there. It is Vortex. Uh, definitely upgrade with confidence. Next, guys, is from the Cursed Cult, and it's uh, yours truly, one of my personal favorites. I've mentioned her in a few videos now. It is Iona. Uh, man, she's a beast. AoE damage. If AoE damage is your thing, look no further than Iona. Uh, obviously, a mage here. Uh, cost of 17. On the A1, we have AoE damage to one enemy, or just AoE damage. On Starfall Ultimate, we're talking big time damage. Big girl damage here. Uh, during the ultimate lasts for 20 seconds. Each attack summons a star domain to the enemy's location, dealing 50% AoE damage. After a while, multiple stars will fall within the range of the star domain, dealing 30% AoE damage four times. <clears throat> and then the Fury of Starry Night increased attack speed by 100 for 15 seconds once every 30 seconds. You gotta love it. Beast of a hero. Next. So next up is Idril, guys. Oh, what a beast of a hero as well. We've been a little bit light on the uh, marksman here from the Star Piercers. Uh, she's amazing. Mainly, well, first of all, she does a lot of damage, but really this ultimate, right? It's it's very special. She's come in clutch for me on so many occasions. Each attack deals 70% attack damage two times, targeting airborne enemies first. Great against air. The cost is an affordable 11, like a lot of marksmen on the cheaper side we have limitless shots man this is insane the attack range becomes unlimited so she can target anybody on the entire map which is so advantageous for obvious reasons attacks a single enemy three times each time dealing 70 percent attack damage and the effect lasts for 15 seconds which feels a lot longer than it sounds 
combo shots. Each time an ally casts their ultimate, this hero's next attack will deal 50% increased damage. Airborne units take 30% extra damage instead. Uh, really, really great hero. Uh, one of my most used heroes from the very beginning until this moment. Uh, I still love me some Eadril. Next up, guys, is another marksman. It is Maul, and Maul is a boss, especially when awakened, okay? Maul is good for all three gear raids, tied as well. Uh, again, on the A1 AoE uh, attack, on the A2, Abyssal Surge, the ultimate, I should say, deals 700, 750 AoE damage and knocks the targets with 1x strength. And then we have on Auto Assault Erosion, a 25 second extends the attack range and each attack deals 150% damage and basic attack can inflict defensive reduction on enemies for 3 seconds. The effect lasts for 8 seconds. A great debuffer. If we look at Awakening, we have on Awakened 1, uh, the ability to land freeze aside from knocking enemies back and then awakened three salt erosion will inflict slow so an amazing damage dealer for great burst area damage and the freeze and the slow the debuffs as well very very good champion i actually have him but i have not built him yet and i can't wait to do so maybe after this video and last but not least, guys, it's certainly not number 10 on the list. It's going to be from the Nightmare console. It is Baron. Baron was one of my, I think Baron was my first epic that I ever pulled inside the game. And boy, have I rode Baron to death in terms of a great defender. The cool thing about Baron is he's better than most legendary defenders. He can stand toe to toe with even legendary defenders. Very, very, very good champion campaign. Void Rift tied you name it uh he attacks deals uh, damage to one enemy his attack can be like sneaky good as well for a defender uh cast a shield that can observe uh, damage equal to 70 percent of max hp for 10 seconds on his ultimate this allows him to just take up an insane amount of damage uh when the shield disappears or it gets broken deals aoe damage one time no big deal and then on the passive deals attacks deal extra damage upon receiving lethal damage enters unyielding stays alive for four seconds when unyielding Yielding ends deals AoE damage equal to 50% of his max HP to the nearby enemies, and this can be triggered up to one time per battle. So again, a great tank. Let me know, guys. Do you have any of these epic heroes? If not, I wish you good luck getting them. And I, I should mention at the end here, if you have an epic that I didn't mention on the list that you absolutely love, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Hey, maybe I missed a few, or maybe I snubbed a few, and I would love to do guides on them at some point in the future. Much love, guys. Thank you for watching, and as always, take care.